get straight into it. I got Audible Doctor here uh, from New York and uh, say hello to him. Here he is. Audible Doctor, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm good, man. Welcome to uh, the first episode of my show. I appreciate you coming aboard. I'm honored. Yeah. I'm honored to derail this thing from the first episode. Or that's what's up. There's no coming back from this. <laughs> so, <laughs> so just uh, some people that you know aren't um, aware. Audible Doctor is an amazing, you know, producer with uh, tons of accolades in the hip hop world and beyond. Uh, movie placements, TV. Um, he's Tom Cruise's brother. Uh, everything like that yep. um, has been confirmed. So um, just, just check him out, The Audible Doctor. Uh, and uh, yeah, so um, we actually recorded this true story previously, and then um, just due to alien abductions and, and, and secrets that were revealed, uh, we had to get reprogrammed and, uh, and start again, unfortunately. However, we're ready for a power-packed hour. Just to let you guys know, um, we're here to talk about anything and everything not just about music. So those of you that are into scratching and DJing and hip hop, dope, but we got a lot more than that for you. So um, right now you're uh, yeah. in your studio, right? Is that, is that right? Yes, if you could call this a studio, yes. Um, looks pretty studio-ish for me. Like, I mean, so you got um, your whole setup there, you're recording your vocals there, you have, uh, yeah. um, you know, do you have like bands come in and stuff too? Or is it, you know, just you recording your own stuff? No, it's just me. I can't. I uh, this is literally a corner of my living room mm -hmm. that I've just set up as my workspace, and I do all my production from from writing, recording, producing, all of my mix downs. Everything gets done here. That's dope. But uh, I don't like people in my space, so yeah. it's not. <laughs> if I'm working with somebody, I go I go out out to a, a different studio space. But. You know what? I'm, I'm a lot like that as well. It's really rare that uh, I bring people over. When I lived in Montreal, uh, I'm, you know, living in, in Los Angeles right now, when I lived in Montreal, I had like a, a really big a studio. And I think actually you were there one time. But uh, the, the, the room was yeah. really huge. So I was able to have like full bands in there. And, and uh, it was fun, you know, to, to be able to like pay rent recording people doing stuff like that. And uh, But but there's just no way since, uh, since moving to the United States, I haven't done that. But um, yeah, so yeah, my goal is my goal is actually to get like a a little because there's little rooms essentially you can rent by the month or six month leases or whatever. And I, my goal is just to get like a little soundproof room and just build out like a basic studio just so I can collab in there more. But I just don't like yeah. it's it's in my crib. Like I don't like bringing people in and out, and you know what I mean. Yeah, hundred percent, especially right now. You know yeah, with the way things for are. Sure. <laughs> we were we were joking around earlier, yeah. everybody, about you know like how. Every, 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 you know, show that you hear is all starting with, how are you coping since? Yeah. <laughs> so we only have a couple of rules. Which is, which is valid, but it gets tiring hearing that over and over again. Yeah, we just, we just arrived at that point. Just, just today. Yeah. Just today in, in the world. So, um, <laughs> so we just have a couple of rules on, on the, on the podcast and it's, uh, just that, you know, if you start talking about politics or, uh, Corona. You only have like a few minutes to sort of like flesh that out and uh, get back to uh, to some actual to real shit to, to real to real shit. So um, yeah, I, I wanted to I wanted to talk to you about like how you do your work because over the years, like I've noticed that uh, like your progression as an artist, like there's more to you than just like a beat producer, you know. And I've seen I, I don't know, I've seen you, you know, you write lyrics. I've, I've heard hooks that you've sung and we spoke a little bit about your singing last time too about you know your growing up um sort of with your exposure to music and how um i don't i don't want to speak at all all of it for you but um, yeah no tell, tell my story it's cool well basically like you, you, I, think you, 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 I know you're joking but i remember you said something about uh there was like a, a your, your parents brought you to uh, or your, uh, your mom brought you to like a a music instructor and just sort of like that, you know, tested tested you out vocally, and and you had uh, good range. Yeah. And uh, t tell me a bit more about that. Yeah, they uh, when I was younger. So my my mom, I don't know how she knew, but she always um, knew that there was some kind of like musical talent that I had, or some some draw to music. Um, right. From the time I was young, she bought me this little like crappy keyboard. And I used to sit on the, like as a baby, used to sit on the kitchen floor and like play with it. Whoa. I called it my Mugit because I couldn't 
say music properly. <laughs> wait, wait, <laughs> so hold, young. hold up, hold everything. Say that one more time. What did you call that? My Muget. That's amazing. Yo. <laughs> it was this little blue, like, Casio, tiny little shitty keyboard that, like, played awful sounds, but it also had, like, plug-in... This must have been from the 80s. It had, like, little plug-in cards wow. that you could plug in, and then it would, like, light up the key so you could play, like, Mary Had a Little Lamb along with the song and, like, all these... Whatever. Wow. But that was, like, from the time I was little, I was obsessed with that thing. Mm-hmm. Um... I think she still has that too, but uh, but so she was always trying to push me into different things musically. So like she, I was took piano lessons for like nine years. Mm. Um, I played guitar for a while, took guitar lessons. I was in the children's choir um, of my hometown. That's the the story you're talking about. So like we, she wanted me to do more things musically. So she brought me into audition for the children's choir, and. Uh, I'd never really sung before, but I went to into like audition for it. And there's different levels of, of choirs that you can be put into. And uh, when I auditioned, the the guy turned to my mom and he was like, "We can put him any in any of these levels. Like he can he his voice isn't there yet, but he has this the ear. He has the the foundation there. Like I don't care where he goes, just keep him singing, basically." And that was the same thing with my piano teacher. It was like, uh, I, I used to go and I would, she would give me, you know, lessons to, to practice. And I would never do it. I would just make up my own compositions when I got home. And then I'd get back for the next lesson. And she'd be like, oh, did you practice? I'd be like, no, I didn't do any of that. And she said the same thing. She was like, told my mom. And she was like, I don't care if he never practices a day in his life. Just keep him playing. Like, there's something there. Mm. So I think a lot of people just saw that that, that was, there's always a connection with me and music just always was, from the time I was young. And it seems that they were, you know, you, you kind of, you, you caught wind of that. Like they told you, like you, you kind of knew. Yeah. They, they what? definitely, reinf- I, I knew there was a draw there, but they reinforced all of them really reinforced, like just keep doing something musical, yeah, you know? Yeah. And how did that feel like growing up? Like, did you like right away go like, wow, like and stick to it, you know, like religiously or, or, or how did that go? I didn't. Um, it's funny because when I was younger, it didn't really, register as much i think obviously when i found hip-hop is when it really clicked and i was like oh, okay this is what i want to do because i was right. before that i was like playing piano and doing this and that and like it was fun but it didn't it didn't really like feel like me yeah and um when i found hip-hop is when it really clicked but i i realized in hindsight now that because they were pushing that and because I had those opportunities and my mom, oh, anything I want to do musically, my mom would be like, all right, let's get you lessons. Let's sign you up. And I think because of that, I never had a question about what I was going to do in life. You know, I, like, I know a lot of people that when they're growing up, they're trying to find their passions or figure out what their lanes are or, or yeah. like what direction or what they want to do. And I'd never had a question. I always knew it was something to do with music. I didn't know what it was until I found hip hop, but like I knew it was going to be something music related, which wow. is a blessing. Yeah. Well, and it shows in your work. Like, I mean, you also do mixing and mastering. Like, like I've always seen, yeah. I've always seen you from outside as just the guy who does everything. And you know, I'm I'm one of those guys too. You know, happen to be mm-hmm. just because it just I just it, I'm interested in it all. You know, as well. So it's kind of like yeah. But 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 it, so you know, I guess the respect was always there. Like on that level of like, wow, like you know. Um, I want to get good at mixing. I want to get good at mastering, or what? Not even mastering, but just yeah. being able to handle it all. But um, yeah, uh, that's really cool. And so, you know, I noticed that you know um, you never had a sort of traditional, let's say, like um, like a, have to have a sampler or have to have a you know specific formula to make. Like you had you. I remember you were using um, a program called Acid, which was one of the first programs I used. Which kind of, yeah. which kind of, a lot of people shied away from. I found in the, you know, or or just didn't consider it professional or whatever you want to call it. You know, like yeah, it, it, was, it was. It's grown a lot, but it really went back when I was using it. And early on, was not. It was like considered a toy, basically. It wasn't like a real program for for music production. Right. Yeah. And it, well, before that, I was using Cool Edit. I don't know. Did you have anything before Acid that you were using, or was it just you know? I mean, I first first started with a. It was like a digital four track recorder and an oh. old Dr. Boss uh, drum machine okay. that you could yeah. 
you could play MIDI through and you could also sample into it, but like it was super basic and I made horrible, horrible beats on it. Um, Do you have any of them left now? Maybe, nah, I have no idea. Maybe be, somewhere. I'd have to dig those up. But like really, really bad production. That'd be amazing um, to hear. Be amazing to hear. And I, I don't remember, but I feel like the sampling limitations on that were so bad that I wasn't even really able to make sample based beats on that. I think I was mostly making weird MIDI beats because I had a keyboard too. So I was like playing weird MIDI beats with sh- really horrible stock drums from this drum machine. Um, so, but then, so you started with hardware, really? Technically, yes, but it didn't last long. So I was doing that for maybe a year before I figured, I found Acid. My brother introduced me to Acid. And then that changed the game because then I could sample big portions of records and really start to chop things up. And that's how I learned to sample chop was in Acid, when I could actually have the capacity to fully take a full song and chop out all the parts that I want and be able to use whatever I want and structure it that way. I'm curious. That was really the... I'm curious. Creatively, did, when you had that moment when you realized, you know, that you could do all those things that you had limitations on before, were you like, were you like, oh my goodness. Like, yes. Yeah, yeah. I remember... I remember. 100%. It changed the game. Yeah. And it was, the, it was the same, like around that era when I figured out I could sample was around the era that I realized that hip hop song sampled. Like I was, I was young enough that I didn't really understand that a Dr. Dre song was based on, was a sample of an older song. And that was, I think around the era where like super, I don't know if it was Napster, but like super primitive file sharing programs were around. So I would literally look in the CD booklets to figure out what songs were sampled by whatever producers, Dr. Dre or like a Tupac song or whatever. Yeah. And then go on that primitive like file sharing program, download the original, so I could figure out what they did to it. Like mm-hmm. I l- literally just started studying hip hop production at that point because I, I began to realize how it all actually functioned. You know, did you ever back? Did you ever backwards engineer any of them by trying to like remake them? Not full on. I, I I attempted a couple of times, but I was so like I was so rudimentary in what I was able to do that I couldn't really figure it out. But I could my ear wise I could pick out what they were doing. I just couldn't replicate right. it, you know? Sure. Yeah. yeah. So I it was just it. like it was just instructional from that standpoint of being like, oh, this is this part, and then they use that. And their sampling back then wasn't the most complex either. It was mostly like loops and, and very yeah. simple chops. So it wasn't that hard, but yeah. So it's more informational for you to be like, this is what they did. I can see where they you know it's for like, sure. like a blueprint almost. But uh but I don't think you followed exactly, that blueprint. Yeah. Like even like um listening like to your early stuff you had a lot of uh you know, soul samples that were slowed down or like to uh, beyond recognition, you know, and I, and I, that's the funny thing is that whole, so like the slow down soul sample thing became a part of my sound too. And that whole thing started because in acid, acid allows you to loop, um, samples. So it's like a loop based, uh, sequencer, I guess, essentially you could call it. But the time stretching was so horrible that if the if your tempo was too fast or too slow compared to the original sample, it started sounding like shit. So I ended up figuring out a way to stretch samples by pitching them down, basically. So that entire sound started as me trying to figure out how to make the sample sound cleaner. And it just kind of grew into my sound of like pitch down soul samples. That's really interesting for me, especially because... Um I remember using uh, that program, and it just gets really glitchy. And you, you know, even if you're mm-hmm. and you're bordering close to the to the range, like you know, you change it five BPMs, and you're like, it just starts to click a little bit. And you're like, oh come on! You try to find a way around yeah. it, um, you know. But you, you, that that's really interesting for me, for someone who knows that, that how to use that program, because I would have just thought it was like yeah. to be unrecognizable, to to be. Uh, but hey, that that's no. that, that's really cool. As- and I did ha- I did have that like element of super underground. Like I want to get records that nobody's ever heard of. But being a teenager in Wisconsin, it's not the easiest to find super rare records. You know, so it's like I just sampled what I could, and I ended up pitching things down as a means to make it sound cleaner. I just realized Wisconsin, right? So uh, yeah. we weren't that far from each other, especially like I'm in Manitoba. Um, in, yeah. in, in, and especially in terms of weather, like you went through some pretty hard, hard, hard oh, yeah. 
even though yep. like nothing in comparison to the strength of the Canadian spirit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, but relative. I basically say like. Wisconsin, Michigan, Canada are all like cousins. Yeah. Oh no. I mean, we all have to go through a lot of like it's you know six to eight months of change. You know, in the winter and when summer comes, yeah, and, yeah. And when summer comes in, everybody's like uncontrollably happy for some whatever reason. And yeah. Like, so that's that's cool. So you had a lot of probably like hibernating season when it's like I'm, there's definitely no reason for me to go outside right now. Uh, and that's that's the thing too is I remember when I was younger, the cold didn't bother me. I was out all times a year you were? with like in, in Wisconsin. Yeah. Well, what was the like temperature it, like I don't, at the worst there? I don't remember. I remember it getting below zero a number of times. I just can't remember. The winters were usually, I mean, it, it, it ranged. Um, but I remember the winters being pretty cold, but it just not bothering me for some reason. Yeah. And I've, I've been in New York now for 17 years, something like that. Wow. And it's a it's a totally different like I can't when I go back home for Christmas and stuff, it's like I can't handle the winter anymore. I can't handle yeah. that. I thought New York cold was bad and it's not I can't handle Wisconsin anymore. I lost no. that that grit. No, there's no <laughs> there's no comparison and in New York in the winter. Like I remember yeah. barely ever seeing snow when I lived in New York, you know, in, in the winter times, you know. Yeah. Um which as a skateboarder is really good, but but um, and you were telling me that you did a lot of out, outdoor uh, stuff. Speaking of which, like you did a lot of, um, you were always on your um, bikes and just like off road. Yeah. Right? Tell me a bit about that. Yeah, I used to like mountain bike, like yeah. uh, like crazy when I was a kid. Like I used to, from the time I guess I was I started riding a bike, till the time I was able to drive. Basically, I was just on a bike all day every day. Like that was my mode of transportation. That's what me and my friends did. We, there were these trails, uh, like a few blocks away from where I lived, through the woods. Like these actual, really dope off-road trails, and we would just spend all of our days just riding the trails and hitting jumps and, and doing like crazy. It's crazy because I used to be in phenomenal. I'm getting I'm fat now, but like I used to be in phenomenal shape when I was younger, and I thought that was just my. I was telling you this earlier. I thought that was just my body type. I thought I was like, oh, I'm just like naturally super in shape and cut and like super muscular and uh until i was like 27 when i realized like oh all that time with me and my friends that was exercise (laughs) that wasn't like just fun that was actual exercise and as an adult i'm realizing like oh okay that's a i i I don't exercise (laughs) that's that's great yeah that's that's what's changed (laughs) you know i i totally uh experienced that when um i had some time where i couldn't skateboard and i was like you know my whole life i've been you know skinny and fit and all that and yeah, you notice it, um, metabolism slowing down, but uh, but that's cool. So that was like a big part of yeah. your sort of like outdoorsness. Like you were like, were you like, did you have yeah. like tricks or things that you were trying to learn, you know, when you did that? Did you have like... Dude, it was, it, it was, it was everything. It was a lot of trail riding, a lot of jumps. And then we got into, I don't even know what you call it, but it was like, um, there's a, definitely a term for it. I just don't really remember what it's called, but it's just like almost like obstacle course like we would build obstacles out of wood and then literally like bunny hop through them and then like bunny hop in a wheelie to the next obstacle. I, there's a term for it. I just can't remember what it is. I haven't done it in so long, but we would literally do th- like whatever kind of crazy control we could have to like maneuver these obstacles in different ways. And yeah, we spent so much time doing that. Yeah, I feel you. Um, that's cool. That's cool. It's just interesting because we had like so many similarities, you know, in terms of, like the weather, the type of software, yeah. and then the sports ish aspect. But um, yeah. another thing, I, we are the same person. You know this. We are the, we're the same same human being. <laughs> uh, uh, and 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 speaking of which, like, um, I, I wanted to touch on something that like I feel like one thing that we're both in the pursuit of is finding out what our art happiness uh sorry what was that happiness happiness that <laughs> is something that we just wake up having and we have that in abundance and we don't let people take that away from us yeah. it's kind of like a, a thing that's um that's that's another good trait but what i meant was um <laughs> is that we're looking for some like true form of what our, our artistry is you know what uh what we're really trying to do, you know, breaking these barriers of like what we are to find out what we really want to be, let's say, or, or, or finding new tricks 
like I was saying last time we spoke, um, and and it's it's something um, I've been able to break the barriers of, you know, because for people who wonder what do you mean the music barriers and stuff, because as as, as hip hop yeah. growing growing up, you sort of get these rules handed to you, fake rules, <laughs> but they're like yeah. they're like um, rules uh, where you know you have to use a sampler or you have to sample a record or. Or, or sample or any, anything, but and you just feel like communally, like in, in the whole hip hop culture, that you, this is something you have to do, and yeah. and and actually hip hop traditionally was about breaking rules or, or making your own game, so um yeah. so coming into our zone, you know where we're now like at that upper echelon, uh, we both proved ourselves on on every level um in in the, in the industry and also just also just like with our peers, people people we looked up to uh, like looking at what we do and, and, and giving us feedback, which is, you know, phenomenal. But once we passed all of that, the, 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 fe the feelings that that would, uh, you know, give you as an artist, you know, the fulfillment, let's say, now we're at this level of, well, what do I do with it? Like, how do I, I, I elevate? And I think you're a rare breed for that because most of the people I know just, um, I'm sorry, guys, but it's true, uh, just uh, stay <laughs> at a, a level uh, of, of I'm happy with the skills that I have and I'll, yeah. perform them I'll tour with them I'll I'll teach them but they just sort of like stay at that sort of level and I, and I find that you're yeah. one that I've seen constantly evolve uh, and it's really interesting to me and it's one of the reasons I want to talk to you is because you know you just have this like constant evolution and this this constant and and and, um, and consistent output level whereas you know uh, um, I think other people um, it, it ranges so uh, it's, it's, a, it's a long question, but but it, it just comes to like how do you sort of you know in that experience like how do you find yourself like um, did you find it as a struggle to, 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 to accept these new changes you know that that come into your art like I think we spoke about I, about it a bit but I want to let you uh, take over and let us know yeah I I uh, I used to struggle with that a lot like I used to have like you're saying there's when you're in the hip hop world and the hip hop community, especially, um, I mean, I started probably late nineties, early two thousands being like really interested in hip hop. Um, but when you're in that era and you're modeling the, the early nineties stuff, you're given these, like these rules that used to exist. Like you're saying culturally where it's like production wise, you, you sample, you sample rare stuff. If it's not rare, you chop it up so nobody knows what it is. You can't just loop stuff because that's whack. Like all these rules that that um, started me on my path, but have also held me back for a number of years too. Like in 2020, there's no rules. All of those rules are off the window. Nobody cares anymore. There's very and the people that do care, unfortunately, no disrespect to anybody. Um, they're I don't know how to say this diplomatically. <laughs> um, um, the people that really are concerned with that, there's very few people left that are very concerned with that. I'll say that. Um, all right. <laughs> I don't. I don't know how else to say. Well, it. I mean, I, I would like to say to you that there's just no, there's just no reason to to sort of be politically correct, you know. But uh, well, that's that's true. But, that's valid. But yeah. I mean, fuck I, I, those dudes. Thank you very much. Now, back to your <laughs> scheduled programming. <laughs> no, but but um, but I was trapped in that for a very long time, and um, it it was a great foundation to come from, but it also made me start to dislike what I was doing because I was trapped in this formula, right? And I I perfected that formula. I can do that sound all day, and I I, I enjoy that sound from time to time. But when you, like you're saying, when you get to that point where you plateau and you kind of look at the the landscape and you're like, is this just the rest of my life doing this one thing? It gets depressing. It gets, I, I lost my inspiration. I lost, right. I got jaded. I just didn't, right. I was like, what am I doing? I'm just going to do the same thing over and over again for the rest of my right, life. Right, right. Um, but you, and I think what helped. But you, you, what's you that? got jaded though? Like it, it, it just like. Because was, was that because it was difficult for you to find something new, or or you thought you couldn't and you were tired? Well, I was. Well, no, I was jaded because I felt like I was trapped in that box. Yeah. Everybody that liked my stuff 
that was a fan or even like the some of the legendary artists that that showed love were very specific about like we like this sound from you um yeah. and that it was awesome because some of my idols were like giving me props but at the same time i felt locked into this thing like okay i have to do this for the rest of my life um and right. I'm, one of my like real idols straight up said to me and i'm not gonna say who it was but he straight up said to me like yo you should just do this shit for like the rest of your life like that that sound just do that shit forever and i was like this is dope that he's he likes what i'm doing but at the same time i'm like i can't i can't do anything else like i i'm i started off when i was a kid and that's why and that's why that's why i'm I'm really interested in what you're up to but hold that thought about when you when you were a kid because most people don't have that feeling most people find that being told by like one of their you know heroes, uh, like uh, this is yeah. they're like this is what I'm supposed to do now, and and happy yeah. that they've found a path that's like okay they're like that's like an archangel telling you and then you're just like well I'm I'm in now that's all I have to do and yeah you're like, ex- you're accepted now yeah and 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 you're, you've got your path but you were but you realized like yeah. that if you don't like the frustration and that made you jaded re- made you realize you needed something more and you didn't want to just be that. Right. So, so that, that's, yeah. So, yeah. Okay, cool. So you were, yeah. And that's, and that's like I was saying, like from, from the time I was a kid, like my first musical experiences were, um, classical music. My mom got me like, a uh, compilation of like all the great classical composers and i used to just listen to that all day um and then it like evolved and, like, and then i was like really really into r&b like straight up r&b when i was younger um this and then i went through like a, a grunge phase and like i had all these different influences that were almost as important to me as hip-hop hip-hop was different because i found an identity in it that i didn't previously have especially growing up in wisconsin um, it gave me like a sense of value and a sense of understanding of myself a little bit better, but I had all these other influences from the time I was young. So like being trapped in this one sound for the rest of my life, even though I enjoy it, it's just sounded horrible and it was frustrating and it kind of like made me feel, it made me feel like that was my only value was producing this one specific sound. So, and like, so how did you get out of it? Like, what, what, what got you to the point where like, what, what? factors like what, what showed you because you because you completely uh broken out of that box you know and and, and yeah. you still have that those all those abilities from before so it's not like you're something completely different you've just evolved and you have more skills i mean i, I see that as, yeah. as from the outside but how did you what what took you to to break that paradigm that uh, that you were i mean it was it was literally years of fighting with myself first um and but really what got me out of it was the uh when i started doing like sync licensing things like oh, okay. uh, film st- stuff for film and tv and, and right. commercials and stuff because with that work they specifically requested things that i would never do on my own they're the, the, the things that break all of the like traditional hip-hop rules um right from strong writing or production standards it's just like i considered it and when i first started as like the bottom of the barrel worst shit you can do but there was good money, so I was like, yeah, let me just do this, whatever. But in doing that, it kind of opened up my mind musically, production and writing-wise. And I actually started really enjoying doing these things that I would never do in my real music. Um, and I actually got to the point where I became proud of a lot of that work. Like some of those records mm. that are very commercial-sounding stuff for TV film... I'm actually proud of what I did. And it's not my traditional sound, but like I found a similar sense of pride in doing that, that I do in my traditional sound. And that was a big step towards me. And and I learned a lot about the different processes of making different sounds and different styles through doing that work, because I had to attempt to do things that I didn't normally do. Um, So I think doing that and focusing on that and growing those skills opened my mind to, to, in a way to like, try to bring some of that back into my personal music. And this also happened with the music scene just changing dramatically, right? Like right. it's, yeah, yeah, kid, you know, the it, kids these days are just like, there's no standards. No rules. Basically, if you're doing traditional boom bap hip hop at this point, 
um, yeah. it sounds dated, like it just does. And I and I, you know, it, it's it's messed yeah. up to say. I'm I'm old enough to to know that that's like a not something that you want to say, but it honestly does. It's, I mean, it's hard to make traditional boom bap sounding hip hop that's that isn't more musical in some way. Yeah. That doesn't sound dated. Well, you know? yeah, I mean, and, and more than that, it's like really easy to just make boom bap in, in the sense that, like, you know, it, but when it, when boom bap started, that was a sound that was like, hey, what is that? How did they do that? You know, yeah. where where did this come from? And you know, um, and then once, you know, and that was already on the, another evolution of of, of the, the cycles or the, the, the years of hip hop. Like it wasn't like that before, like in like 91 ish, it wasn't new Jack swing for hip hop, but it was like that, like, like, like kick hi hat snare, yeah. like kind of like, like, like more straight yeah. kind of like, and faster. And then once it started getting like groovier and then it went from groovy to like messy, like after Jay Dilla, like co- clones came in and just copied everything. he did. Yeah. Yeah. Um, You know, and then now it's like, anything like you said there's like there's no rules right? it's literally anything yeah and, 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 and especially and the fact that like and especially the fact that what especially the fact that like hip-hop's infiltrated all other genres too so like you yeah. listen to a pop record and there's hip-hop influence in it and then you listen yeah. to a country record there's hip-hop influence in it and it's like i think that also helped me grow out of that because it's like it doesn't everything is 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 influenced by hip-hop now so why do you have to stick to such a rigid idea of what hip hop is? Sure, you know? sure. You know what? My one of my examples has always been that people don't really get along with it. Is that you know? Because it took me a while to break my paradigms as well. But like for example, uh, Hey Ya by uh, by, by yeah. two thousand um, or Outcast, I guess just Outcast. Um, people are like that's yeah. not hip hop. I'm like actually it is, and they're like you know they yeah. want to you know they want to argue about it. I'm like well what what what's hip hop? And hip hop is actually music made. Get this, and then really zoom in close, guys, to your screen. By made <laughs> by hip hoppers, because hip hop is a culture. What? Yeah, yeah. Hip hop is, <laughs> is, a, is a culture, and it's 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 not a genre of music. It just happens to be what people call the genre of music. It's it's a product, a byproduct of the people of the culture of hip hop. So you can do anything, but if you're hip hop, and it will be hip hop. Um, how, however, there's a lot of people who yeah. aren't hip hop who say they make hip hop, and that's a whole other you know story. Like to get yeah, that's the whole you know? yeah. <laughs> but but the, but that but the cool part about it is because like what you were saying, pop is really influenced. Well, well, you know, I think hip hop was really influenced by pop. But but it's like it's, it's sure. what you're saying. It's just like but then also then you have people who are just like hey, let me take the the color of that palette and like you know put that in my painting, you know, whatever. To, to sound yeah, like, yeah. Like who, who, but, and, and, but it's really like you can just tell it's like dry. It's like oh, I'm using hip hop. <laughs> you, know? you know what I mean? Like, am I, uh, <laughs> but, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's easy. It's it's very easy to tell if the authenticity isn't there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, but beyond that, the, the the point is like you, you didn't really care about what was you know a rule or what was, and, and it led you to a place where you were really proud of these new creations, as if you would be in the, in the past yeah. when you discovered your new styles of like oh wow that's a new trick. So, so that's really interesting yeah. to me the most because, like, as an artist, you you kind of search for those moments in a way without knowing it. Because when you get to them, you're like, wow, you know, like those are those moments of like, um, you know, like I understand how to do things at a greater level that 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 I, you know, and I've been seeking this sort of ability, uh, and, and 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 these are skills that we were looking at as like, you know, you know, that there were rules against. Now brought you that same sort of feeling, so. So it's kind of like there's now there's no holds barred, right? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's like and I'm I'm just basically inspired by creativity in in any form, really. Like there's just so especially now it's such a level playing field and access to everybody. I just like people who do creative things musically right. and do them well. That's right. That's it. That's awesome. And so um, one thing I, I remember um, I was asking you about, and it's it's something that um, happens to me all the time. Uh, but does, does this happen to you? Like, like you go out and, and like you haven't been creative and then as soon as you get out, so you see something that inspires you, you've got like, oh, I've got this idea. But, and you just want to like, you know, make it happen, but you, you don't have equipment. And probably if you did, you can't just like stop on the street corner and like, you know, make it, make it happen. <laughs> um, and, and, and it's not the kind of thing that translates to a phone, like with, well, maybe for you, because you, you write lyrics, yeah. but, but, but in terms of the beats and stuff. Yeah. So does that happen to you? Yeah. How do you not, do with that? Yeah. 
I, I, um, I literally try to hold on to the inspiration and hope that it's there the next day when I wake up in the morning and it never is. <laughs> or it, it is sometimes, but it usually does not take the form that it initially came in. Yeah. Like, I'll be inspired by something and then I'll be excited to work and then I'll get home and then I won't have the energy or it won't be happening. And then I'll go to sleep still inspired, but not released if that's the, yeah, no, the that, thing that, that totally makes sense. No, 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 <laughs> and, sense. and then the next morning i'll get up and i'll start working and it usually ends up being something totally different than what inspired me right like i i, I oftentimes do this where when i'm inspired to do something i have like a very specific idea in my head yeah and then i sit down and then what i end up making is something entirely different from where i started but it's something that i you know it's something hmm. and do you find that um yeah like you, you have a pretty good grasp on like what inspires you these days. Like, like, like for example, like, uh, do you know like like you're hyped on this new way that you're doing things, let's say, or you have like a style of doing things that you're really trying to hone in on to the degree where um, you can do it, all, you know, all the time. No, right. I it's, I I've been doing this for however many years. And I have no idea how I work. It's, it's, I swear to God, it's different every single time I sit down. I don't have a, I mean, I can do, I can create something easily, but to create something that I'm proud of or that I'm inspired by, mm. it never, it never happens the same way twice. I have no idea what the catalyst is. I've tried so many different ways of trying to like spark inspiration and none of it works. It just, it happens when it happens. I don't know where it comes from and that's it. And, that, and that's even like when I, you, I mean, you're waiting on me for a record. Like people that, that have worked with me know that my turnaround times on, on verses or beats or remixes and are like horrible. I'll either get it to you the, the day you ask me for it, or it's going to be like five years later. And that's entirely based on like, I can only work when I'm inspired or I can only feel comfortable working when I'm inspired and I don't know how to inspire myself. Like I don't, I have no idea how to spark that. Like it just happens some days and then some days it doesn't. And I can't, I have lucky no control you, over it. Lucky for you, you make amazing shit and we always are inspired by what you, you drop. So like, but I, but it is a well, difficult thing um, <laughs> to actually manifest, you know, something that's not just a creation. Cause I mean, some of those creations that were, you know, like impressed by could be ones that like you said it's just easy for you to create it's it's creation but you're yeah. not it doesn't feel like one of those uh wow like that that the sort of pinnacle moments you're like how uh, i was really happy how i made that and who knows maybe those ones wouldn't yeah. even impress us like it's, it's it's such a personal thing right um yeah but, uh, for sure but yeah i feel like i feel like there's i don't remember who it was but there's like hans zimmer or some composer like a legendary composer said something to the effect of like he was like i've been doing this for however many years and he was like i don't know where music comes from I, to this day and this is like a legit i don't remember who exactly it was but it's like a legit legendary professional composer with with an amazing body of work and he was like i don't know where music comes from i i, I it's not from me i don't know where it comes from it just happens and i'm like that like made me think about it. i'm like that makes so much sense like it's not you're just like an instrument in this thing that happens sometimes, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I totally get that. And and I've had those moments too. But like, uh, you know, it, it, you're, you're creating and it just, but it, but I think this is something um, that's familiar to both of us too is in the process of how we work, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it's like you always see the next step, like the next step of what needs to be done in order to complete a, yeah. a, a song or, or, or it's like, but but you don't necessarily know like the next 143 steps, but you know the next one for sure. And it's, bla and it's yeah. blatantly obvious, like that's next. And it might not even be that yeah. pressing to do that thing. It's like, I have to, you know, fix the end of that snare, you know, whatever, whatever that is, but, yeah. but you know that it's something that needs to be done. And, it, and then that takes you to get the next step. And then, and then each, each yeah. one of those takes you till you get to the end. So that kind of process, yeah. I think, I, I don't know if it's everybody that experiences that, but at least it's a guiding path for somebody for someone who doesn't have an idea of, of, of sort of where they're going it's, it's it allows you to just kind of continue it's like your process but um but so I, oh sorry go ahead no as i was gonna say i think that's the only 
way I get anything done is that that exactly what you're saying, that micro focus of what you're doing in the moment, like not even being able to see where it's going to end. Just like, Oh, I got to do this thing. Oh, now I got to fix this thing. And now I got to fix this thing. And it's like, there's a, there's a term for it, but it's when you're, when you zone out and you're in a state of flow and you don't really realize what you're doing. And then you basically wake up when you're done and, and, and are able to like assess what you've done. Yeah. Um, it's that, it's just like tuning into the, the micro details of every little action and then like, okay, this is next. And then this, and that's the only way I ever get anything done because I'm not focused on what it is. I'm just like going through the motions, zoning out, making it the way it's supposed to be. And then it ends up turning into a song. Yeah. 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 Well, that's, it's, it's awesome though. I mean, a few people have the ability to sort of like maintain a life that, that has that in there. And, and I think that's what you do all the time. And by the way, that song, there's rarely anything to do. I gave you the, 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 the song just to finish mixing. I know. Out of respect. I was like, you know, let me, let, him, know. Let, me make, let, let me let him mix it because it's his vocals. So it's not like he, I could have finished the song. But, um, but yeah, um, songs about zombies too, guys, in a sense, about the music industry sort of taking over. As a, I, I think so. So it's a perfect time. It's yeah. a perfect time to release it. But, um, yeah, uh, that's cool. Uh, on a completely random um, tangent, I just read uh, yesterday that we've used – can you believe this? Like over one and a half times the Earth's resources, or, or actually, we've, no, we've currently used all the resources for the planet for this year that, that we normally need to use, right? But it'll take another, like if for us to get what we need for this next year, it'll take like a, a year and a half. Like, so we're, 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 we're half a year short on resources. Wait, that was the planet's resources? Yeah, yeah, the entire planet. I thought that was like a U.S. No, I, no, I wasn't no. listening when you initially and, said it, and, and I was and, like, and, and, oh, the U.S. is fucking up again, whatever. And, and, but the and, actual and, planets? And here you have it, folks. Um, see, the Americans, they, they only see things from... No, no I'm <laughs> <laughs> it's, that's, that's valid. That's very valid. <laughs> But uh, wow! But, uh, so we're just you know, be- we're just ultra fucked at this point. Well, yeah, we over we over we overspent, and there's no um, there's no uh, what do you call it cash advance, you know, on, on that kind of stuff. Yeah, there's no. Yeah. yeah, and we're not through the year yet. Like it's we already got here now, like earlier. But it's because everybody's staying at home, I guess, and buying more than they should. I, I don't know, like whatever it is. They say the economy's dipped but we've actually used more but it, it could it could be for other things that I, you know i haven't done all the research it's just like a fact that we've we've yeah i guess we've what are the resources that we're we're talking about here i guess that's the mm-hmm. biggest thing well i mean we could we could look into it uh definitely i, ha- I had the article here um but it, it's it, what i can tell you though is is it's going to take another year and 1.6 years so we have whatever you know it is that we need for the for the next year. So it's called the overshoot day, and it's the year where um, humans <clears throat> uh, use up all the natural resources that will take twelve months to renew. Um, so uh. yeah, so the calculations were made by the um, Global Footprint Network. Uh, uh, so um, it's it's been showing that since two thousand three, we've been on a, a, a rising you know, alarming, rising, um, expanding human consumption uh, rate. Uh, but um, it's not just because of, of what's happening in, in, in the world, you know, in terms of COVID and stuff. Um, but I don't know, it's just yeah. something interesting to look into. I, I think, I, I think um, to, to, to me, it makes me think twice about how much I'm using and how much I'm buying and how much I need. I mean, look at all the cell phones we buy, you know, it's like everybody's getting a new cell phone. Yeah. It's like there's some every year there's some, yeah. and, and there's like, you know, elements and things uh, and, and compounds that are like not being recycled. They're just being thrown away, you know? Uh, and that's like the whole, uh, like cheap clothing thing. Like I wear almost exclusively old Navy because it's cheap and I don't care whatever. But right. the whole thing is people do that regularly because it's like five bucks for a shirt. You buy it, you wear it for a year, and then you throw it away. And like supposedly a, a large portion of landfills is just these cheap clothing that people buy, wear for a year, and throw oh. out at the end of it, you know? And they don't biodegrade because it's not a natural fiber. And it's just like, it's just filling up in all this wow. 
waste is coming from these cheap disposable clothes that everybody's like H and M and Old Navy and yeah. all these companies that people just buy as cheap. You throw it on and then you throw it away when it gets dirty or stained or something. You know, like yeah, there's yeah. so many things that we're we're fucking up. Yeah, but to, but it's kind of crazy because like. I want to buy like old, you know, samplers and turntables and stuff, right? You know, and I want to. Some people, yeah. some people like dig for old clothing, and you know, like you, you almost yeah. feel like if we stopped all production of everything right now, right, we'd have enough cell phones that work for every kind of network there is. We'd have enough like for sure. routers and laptops and for for everybody, and we could just like dig through yeah. them, like oh, I'm gonna go to the Goodwill store or the used Radio Shack, whatever that the hell, like you know, used Future Shop or. Well, yeah. That's a Canadian company, I think, but like, you know, use Best Buy, whatever it is. Like, and then you would go there yeah. and you're like, oh, look, look, there's a laptop from 2013. And like, but we, but we're so like, oh, 2013, like, yo, that's like, I can't, yeah. I, can't I can't be seen. <laughs> like that doesn't even run on like, you know, Catalina or something. It's like, it's like, we could just, yeah. we could just like change our, our whole, like, I think there's already the desire to use old shit. Like we're all kind of wanting yeah. to, so I, I mean, I feel like that might go that way. Like it might go to it's, I mean, it's, it's definitely possible. I see more and more, uh, like clothing specifically companies popping up where it's, it's reused clothing. Like there's, there was like a subscription. I almost signed up for it. Actually, there's a subscription service where you like pick out your style and what you want. And they, they send you used clothing in that style yeah. And then you wear it for as long as you want, and then you send it back to them, and they'll send you a new outfit or two or whatever. And oh, it's just crazy. like you just keep getting. Obviously, it's all cleaned and stuff, but like yeah. you just keep getting new, used, vintage-looking clothing, and you just keep swapping it out when you get tired of that look. You know, that's pretty cool. Which is a dope idea. Yeah, yeah, it is. It really um, is. No, it really is. I wonder if they're going to have that for turntables too. You know, you're like, I, I just can't yeah. really function with you know one octave of range you know <laughs> <laughs> no but uh but yeah and on the real that's, that's that's interesting and i think maybe that's where we're heading because like it's not like we're humans are resilient right everybody's always got these like doomsday posts where they're like we finished yeah. the, there's no more water it's like yeah well it's gonna rain you know something's gonna happen <laughs> you yeah. know and, and and we're gonna learn from our mistakes and figure out like okay well we need to preserve the next time we have a bunch of rain whatever it is or 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 you know with, with what you're saying with clothing there's always a reaction to yeah. you know the the results that that, yeah. that we read in the news, so you know I feel like you know um, we're gonna see that kind of vintage sort of cultural yeah. thing come out, or I, I don't know. It'll be interesting. But when I read that, I was just thinking, damn, like it's like if they used if if we finished all of the records, like I think there was some. I think I heard a long time ago there was something about vinyl, like that there will be a point where we've used all the plastic to make vinyl. Like, uh, like you'll have to make it at a different kind of. I heard something wow. about that. Wow! And, and like it, an a, extinction level event for vinyl. Something to that effect. And then and uh, and I was like, well, I mean, you can make it out of other stuff, but like, it's just like I feel like there's enough of it there that we can, you know, either melt it down and make new stuff, or or for sure, <laughs> or or just like you know, people cats like digging for records, like like there's never gonna be. A shortage of drum breaks, you know. I, I don't think so. Like I, yeah. for the amount of humans that actually make beats with it, but I, I don't know. There could be a level where we get to it, but there's always like a new track, like, and then there's like that one producer, like, uh, that that I use a drum break from a newer song, and you're like, wait, what? Really? Like, yeah. You know, I think Dilla did that <laughs> on, uh, on 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 uh, what was it? Uh, it was, I think it was on Donuts too. It was a, it was a newer 45. Um, I, I, I can hear the song in my head. I just don't remember the name because the, the, the songs are, names are almost irrelevant. Um, um, but um, it was yeah. just a loop, mostly, and he didn't really play anything on it. But it was a newer record. It was like from the 90s. And you know how like, yeah. we were always like, oh, 70s or 60s? And maybe, it's another, yeah, maybe it's another one of those rules. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, for people that don't know, you know, but... Uh, but yeah, it's just it's it's interesting to, to, to live in this time where like we you know have you and I like we have everything we want we've gotten you know uh, where we would want to in our careers and then the floor drops out of the planet. <laughs> yeah. But, but, but we're both in, but, but we're both in a position where artistically we're never we've never been exploring you know more than before and we're learning more than ever and I, yeah. I think it's 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 because like a lot of Artists like I've heard, 
I don't want to say complaining, but they're complaining um, about you know yeah. how oh we're not on stage anymore or or you know there's not an you know nineteen year old producers are taking whatever it is. Um, but but th- yeah. I feel like those people are so far removed, and I and I was almost a, a victim of it too. But um, luckily neither of us got well, jaded to that degree. You know we, we were able to yeah. push through to but, make it now. But I mean that's the thing too is like they're right like the new if you're trying to play by the old rules the landscape is completely fucked yeah the thing is there aren't rules anymore you don't have to play by the old rules you don't have to sign to a label and produce for this artist to get popping and do like you don't have to do all these steps that you used to have to to be able to accomplish your goals there's no you start your own thing you yeah. can literally start a live stream on Instagram or Facebook or somewhere and Twitch or something and just start doing your own fucking production live stream. Find some random artists on your block and build your own little camp and do like, there's no, you can distribute your own music for very cheap nowadays. You can get your music everywhere in the world. You can promote it yourself online. There's no excuse for trying to stick to the old standards and to be mad at the people that are in that system that are deemed successful. Cause most of them I, I agree. aren't, you know, they're famous, but they're not, like, successful. I completely agree. But then, then there's that new level of being mad at the current climate of the world or whatever, you know, uh, people having tours canceled, you know, and, and things like that. Yeah. And, and, I, and, I, and like you said, you know, go to Twitch or, or like, it just... But, yeah. But just... The thing there's is, been a bunch of, of live from home performances that are really, really dope. Like, you can yep. figure it out. And it, yeah, you can, and and I think it changed the skate because you know you go to the club before and you see the DJ, all the DJs, you know, playing the same ten songs, and you guys all know who, yeah. you know, who I'm talking about. I'm calling all of you out, um, but <laughs> but um, but now when you see those Twitch performances of, of DJ sets and all that, people um, don't want to see reruns or the same thing, so they they flip to something new. Yeah. So I think it's actually like inspired newness, you know, and like and like yeah, for sure, and it. In your and again, they're they're not locked into the DJ rules of like you got to play something that gets the crowd hype. You got to do you know you, you got to get it the energy up and blah, blah blah. Like now DJs are allowed to experiment and just do some weird mix mashup shit because yeah. it's a stream and you it know? makes them hype. Like so, but now we're actually going exactly. back to like sort of the root of things. I, and I, I like that. And and so yeah, for me, it's it's like you know the exploration as an artist is like never been. It's just, it's really fun to be at that, to me, like, there's, it's, the only expectations I have are, are of myself to, um, to, to actually see through the ideas that I get, that I try to hold on to, like you do when you get to the corner, you know, like, hold it like some, yeah. like, genie in a bottle, and, like, hopefully that genie's still there in the morning, or, or, <laughs> but, 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 but for me, most of the time, it is, like, I have a way of, of doing that now, and I'm, and I try to, to, to just get up. And go do it, and and I think that's what a lot of people are doing now. And I think it's 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 gonna like everything always gets doper. People say, oh, the, the, the yeah. past, oh, it was so dope when they, but that's not true. Like there was dope stuff from the past, that's for sure. But things for sure. always get doper, and people just can't. This is very few people that can see it in the moment. I don't know why, but like even for me, but like. What I can tell is that there's things that I, I'm enjoying doing that, that are dope doing, and, and, I, and I can see that you, from afar, like what you're doing is dope, and and and, and like I'm I'm, in, I'm inspired by by people like yourself doing that. So it's a it's, for me it's a great time right. to live in, and I, and I don't I, for sure. I don't see the the negative aspects that that you know uh, some some people have been bringing to light, and and I don't enjoy uh, the politics of it. I don't know what you're not like really into politics and. and you know, and I, and I know you have like, I know yeah. you're, but I, I can say that I know you wish people well, you know, um, yeah. like, um, like Trump when he wished, uh, just land, uh, well, well, oh he just, God. I wish her well, I wish her well. <laughs> oh my God. I wish her well, I wish her well. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but that, but, but I mean, it, it, how do you see, like, cause like, I'm sure because for me, I just would hope that everybody would be okay. You know, I, I'm, I'm at a level where I, yeah. I would say I'm a bit more spiritual than before. And I just kind of wish that everything would be okay for everybody. And I send out good vibes to the people that might need it. And that's the kind of like, that's as political as I get. You know, but for, for, uh, for you, like, yeah. like uh, I wonder, like, someone 
like we share a lot of similarities, but like I'm sure there's some differences too. But like, so what, what, what is, how do you fit in like with this? And it's okay if you completely block it out. I'm not trying to corner you to definitely do not give an answer that, that we're not, no one's expecting you to be on and right or left or anything. I just, I feel like your answer is the best answer. So like, you know, um, and I know that's all I would get from you, but I just, yeah. I'm not trying to set you up for some, here's, you know, tell us your political views because like there's just so much, yeah. everybody should understand before, I'm asking another artist a question like this, where there's so much canceling and cancel culture happening these days. Yeah, that, that this is like kind of like a, 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 a you know, a, not a great question for people. But I am curious with all like the stuff that you know, the inspiring things that you're doing, and and the outside the box mentality, uh, you know, and, and and the different path that you've had. I just wonder like what what it feels like to be in a in a climate, you know, let's say like this, where everybody's so concerned about yeah. the politics. To the degree where it's maybe, in my opinion, taking us away from from actual, you know, the 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 beauty of life that that they're fighting for. Let's say, you know, that's that's from my perspective. Yeah, for sure. I mean, for sure. I, I mean, there's um, it's such a complex subject because at the root of it, there's a lot of truth um, that needs to be spoken on, and there's a lot of issues that are going on, and our country is. So so at least in you know here in the U.S. it's so divided and, and there's so much chaos going on. I don't generally speak about politics. Um, I actually have I released a couple of songs recently that speak on what's going on uh, a little bit, but it's just because I at that time when I was recording that's what was on my mind and that's what I was feeling. And one of the lines that I have was. Um, they wonder why he's silent on the issue. I'm dealing with my trauma, homicide, blatantly in view. Um, and that's kind of just where I am. Like, I, it, it's hard for me to speak on things when I'm still processing, you know, and it's, it's, it's important for people to speak up, but you don't have to speak up. Like you're, it, it nothing is worse than somebody who is saying something just to be a part of the conversation. Right. If, if I have something that needs to be said, I will say it, and that's yeah. fine. Anything that I'm going to say at this point is just going to be mimicking what so many other people are saying. What's the point of me chiming in? It's the same thing with, like, RIP posts on Twitter and Facebook and everything. It's like, and, and, and Instagram, it's like... I feel that. If someone passes away and they mean something to you, that's, that's one thing. But why are you forced to tell people... And usually in like a weird backhanded way, like, oh man, you know, I remember I met them and they said I was really, do like, it, it's, there's so much posturing and, and, and bullshit wrapped up in, in what people are saying to the yeah. world that like, I just can't, I'll have a conversation face to face with anybody about it. But as yeah. far as like promoting a message to the world or tweeting it or putting it on Instagram or like making records specifically about it, like there's just so much posturing. I, I It's hard for me to feel genuine using my voice in that way, at least in a way that would be unique from what everybody else is already doing. You know, and like, I agree. I don't, if you know me, you know that I agree with, with a lot of the voices that are speaking out about it. So it's like, I just, I don't, I, you know, I don't, I don't feel the need to, to, to preach when most of my timeline outside of Facebook, F Facebook's a whole different animal, but most of my timeline is, saying the same thing mm -hmm. it's not like i'm yeah. telling anybody anything that they're not already seeing you know yeah 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 yeah, yeah. No, so I, I, facebook's different but but no, outside yeah. of that <laughs> yeah well and and, and I, I hear what you mean in terms of like different um social medias having different you know like twitter's a lot of people complaining or something let's say I, I, yeah. uh, you know instagram's a lot of like this is what i'm up to right now and this is where i am and facebook's a lot of like yeah. i'm just being silly with my family and friends uh here's some like crazy yeah. cats that i found um my friend, you know, uh, <laughs> sent me this picture of me when I was nine. I don't know, whatever. But um, so we all understand that there's different, you know, because in because in Facebook you have also your fan pages, which then those represent your music. So then the Facebook side yeah. just represents you as a person, kind. Of, and then you know, there's different yeah. dynamics. But beyond social media, what what you're saying really speaks to me because, uh, especially about how the example when someone passes away, um, because you know. Yeah. Uh, to, to jump on and be like, I, I had this experience, like you mentioned, you know, with this person and uh, I wanted to share it. Why now? Yeah. Like, why, yeah. why not before? Like, we all, I already, like, 
understood um, my relationship to that artist. I already understood my relationship to racism and not wanting it to exist. You know, but but I don't I don't yeah. need to like all of a sudden be like, well, now that he's dead. But you know, I do have a funny story with it though. Um, uh, yeah. I, uh, <laughs> About a dead it, guy. It, yeah, um, uh, 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 Jean Jacques Perry. Um, he he wrote uh, Eva. Um, mm. uh, so I actually just was doing a scratch video uh, over that song, and you know, fretless fader, put it out, um, and then the next morning he died, and I was like, what? Like, why did I decide? Like, I was like, I wanted to do. It's not like I'd planned weeks in advance. I was like, you know, today I'm gonna put yeah. that video for uh, my series I was doing at the time called Fretless Fridays, and I'm like, uh, I'm gonna use. Which you should bring back, by the way. Well, I actually kind of already have it, um, and it and it's it's called Century Mode, or it's also just um, called Culture Cuts. Uh, so you'll you'll see me like basically, uh, you'll see me rocking on the Fretless Fader often um but uh, i i i feel i feel like um fretless fridays in itself like a video every week uh on on something it 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 just the way the internet is it's not like i i'm my passion right now is is like going out and finding like some rare like view uh driving out and see because especially this the, right now so, social distancing thing so I try to just like, yeah. I, I, I try to do that um, and, and I'm glad that you're into it and that's dope. But so that one night before, For sure. uh, I, I was uh, <laughs> listening to the, the song Eva and I, 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 you know, I was like, yeah, I'm going to do this. Next morning I saw a post and I thought, oh wow, like um, on, on Facebook, I think it was, and I was like, oh wow, like something about, this, about Jean-Jacques Perry, like this is so cool like, and timely. I'm going to somehow piggyback this. I remember thinking of how social media is. And I'm like, oh, it's his daughter talking about how it's sad that he died. And I'm like, oh, my God. Crazy. Dude passed away probably right yeah. around the time I was recording it. You know? And, yeah. and I was like, yo, that. Oh. And, and so but a lot of people were doing tributes, like DJs especially. And it's like, it, was getting, yeah. it was getting disgusting to the point where it's like, yo, Five Dog died. I'm going to now... Um, do videos only about five dog uh, or, or whatever. It's like, come, yeah. come on. But like, like, I, and I'm straight up calling anybody out to do that. You can comment below or all that. I don't, I don't have anything against you. I just think it's really cheap and low of you to do that, yeah. you know? So get creative. For sure. But, uh, but so I, um, <laughs> I, I would, uh, I took, that's the one time where I, I took uh, the liberty of like, you know, reposting and saying, Hey, this guy passed away last night. This is like on some spiritual, like, how did this like universal connection happen where I, and I'm like, yeah. I'm like, you know, so, so rest in peace, um, dude, you know, uh, I've always loved yeah. the music and, it, and, and, and that's like kind of the only time I've ever been able to, you know, when, when, uh, I, I've had times where I've, I was thinking about it, but me and my friend, uh, Fong Fong, we're talking about, we, we need to like pre-make all of the, you know, my condolences videos. So for when the artists dude. die, I'm I'm not gonna say who, but somebody that I know that worked for a, I guess I'll call it a music media company. Yeah. Um, they were unprepared for. I can't remember who it was. Somebody passed away. <clears throat> I don't remember if it was Mac when Mac Miller passed away or if it was somebody else. But somebody passed away, and they were unprepared and they were scrambling to do their like tribute video stuff. Right. So in preparation, they let they told me the company started putting together tribute posts for other artists that they thought were like high wow. risks for for passing away. Like it just wow. just to know that they would be on the ball if it happened. It was real, and I was Yo. like, like that oh. actually happened. That actually happened. And I'm like, what I, the fuck? <laughs> Yo, Fong Fong from France, if you're listening right now, uh, <laughs> wow. Um, because we we, cause we we could have sold that idea for no I'm just kidding but uh, but it, it but I mean for real though that's like where it's gotten to and and, and that level of being con of, of of contrived sort of like like it sucks you know but but it's also like yeah. it, it's just coming back to the original question about politics and stuff that's where it came from and it's it's just kind of like having yeah. your sort of pre-made just ideas on it it's like just continue to be the good person you are. Like, I think the example that I yeah. had was like, you know, if there's a flip, uh, a, a switch we could flip to go on, meaning all the world's problems be fixed, no more racism, no more money problems. I think a lot of us would flip it to on, right? 
And, 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 and yeah. if somebody would flip it to off, we would all be upset at them because they would be against. Yeah. Not just, it's not like there's no opinion there. It's either you're against humanity for like, and I'm talking about the good things. Like there's, you know, let's make yeah. sure people are well fed. Let's make sure people have schooling. Let's make sure people have um, uh, health care and, 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 and are not oppressed. Like that's what the on switch is. There's nothing and that's, bad in I mean, the on switch. I mean, I think that's the issue is that, is that it's not, I'm sure there are some people that genuinely want to do harm to others, but I think a vast majority of people want to do what they think is good for the world and yeah. good for people. They just right. have uh, misunderstandings or they have fear about certain things or they yeah. have, you know, frustration at their place in life or they have all these things yeah. that are obstacles that are in the way of them being clear visioned in what is best for humanity. And I think that's, yeah. That's the biggest issue. It's miscommunication and it's misunderstanding and it's fear is, is a big factor. And, you know? and that's where the on switch came on. Like the idea for me came because I felt like if everybody like in, in that, just like you were saying, if everybody knew how many people actually want the on switch instead of the off, <laughs> um, yeah. then they'd be like, Oh, okay. You know, like they, I think, I think because I feel the same way you do, I feel like more people want good than bad, but we, but yes, we just, for but, sure. we, but we just don't know it. And we're all afraid of it. So, I mean, I, and I feel like, these these um, types of feelings that we have, like, are, are the like being against the. No, I'm not worried about what people say about me. I'm not, and 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 so the not having fear allows you to get creative too. Just like what we were talking about earlier. For sure, and all yeah. of this is related, and 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 I mean, I feel like if we can just all like let go of that and, and do what we're actually feeling, um, you know, yeah. save the guy who like shot the cop and 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 the guy at the gas yeah, station yeah. for asking <laughs> to wear a mask because that happened not too long ago it's an m16 yeah I mean, there are those people so like i mean if someone yeah. was listening and they're like oh but you know brace doesn't know and it's like i know but but i just think yeah. i just think like it, it would be great if we could all continue to to just explore creatively um allow allow people to um have a room to grow spiritually and share yeah. share culturally um, and, and just like evolve with music without this place of like, um, judgment, which, which happens a lot in, in the music scene. Cause a lot of people get cornered by, you know, like, like you were saying earlier, even by the people you look up to, cause it's, yeah. it's a big thing to be like told by someone you, you, you love, look up to for sure. To say like, cause you're like, well, I guess they got to hear, so I should listen to this. But this is advice I've been waiting for like young Mark. Yeah. 17, 16, 8 year old Mark would have been like, well, so if, 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 if XYZ tells me <laughs> this, then, yeah. then I'm going to listen. You know, if DJ Premier tells me For sure, to do yeah. this, I'm going to listen or something like that. But, but when we get older, it's like, no, I'm not actually. And that's when the real Audible Doctor comes out. And that's when the real, you know, Brace comes out or the real artist comes out. And I think, you know, that's, that's what's really interesting about you as an artist. That's what's been following you over the years and watching you evolve and I think everybody needs to, to, to you know definitely look up Audible Doctor Google him uh, the Audible Doctor yeah um, and he's always got things coming out um, and uh, I know him well enough to know that he's not gonna plug anything that's coming out <laughs> and, and and so <laughs> just understand that googling him is the only way you're gonna find out about all this awesomeness uh, and uh basically yeah and and it's just um it's just with that so but what's what's like um you know cr creatively in your studio like do you feel like right now you have all that you need to, to bust off like or is there like are you trying to like i remember you said something about getting a car you know and you wanted to like get a jeep so your dream to make a studio and then be able yeah to, tell me a bit about that well that's like a side note thing so like as far as my studio setup i have everything that i could possibly need i'm just like basically picking up accent pieces that yeah. I don't actually need at this point. Right. But, um, but the car thing was like, it's just a totally different idea. It was like, I just like, I was telling you this before I've been, I've been taking like last few years been taking solo vacations where I just basically pick a random city that I think seems cool and then go there by myself and, and like no schedule, no, plans no nothing just get there and kind of figure out what i want to do when i'm there you know like that's amazing. and uh and it's just freeing because you're not with anybody there's nobody that's like you have to coordinate schedules with there's nobody that you have to work like when I, my most recent one when i went there i like 
was driving around and just hanging out. And I was like, I'm kind of tired. I went back and just like took a nap at 3 p.m. at the hotel for like yeah. six hours and then woke back up and then just decided to drive downtown and went to like a bar. You know, like yeah. it just it's just like a, a, a section of time where you're just totally free and you're which, not. Which like you know, who's going to on a vacation at 3 p.m. in the peak time of the day say, I'm just going to peace and go to the hotel. I'm paying for this hotel. Exactly. Like, yeah. It's supposed to be like if you're with people, they're going to want to be like, let's go see. Things. Yeah. But but you don't have to when you go on your own. That's amazing. I, yeah, I was I was only able to do that because I was there alone, and that was like the whole point was yeah. that me being there alone gives me the freedom to just do whatever I want whenever I want. I don't feel any yeah. pressure from anybody. I don't have to worry about anybody else. Right. Um, but but that idea has kind of spiraled into what I was talking to you about, like the Jeep. I have this idea of um, getting a Jeep, like a Jeep Wrangler, and basically outfitting it with with the the basics, the, the bare minimum basics to be able to create, uh, produce, record, and mix songs from the back of that Jeep, basically. Yeah. Um, and it just ties into that idea where I can just like, all right, I'm going to go to Wyoming for a f- three weeks. I'm just drive out there and just like park on the side of the road somewhere where it looks nice and just start making a beat. And, you know, just like the, just it ties into that idea of freedom where like, if I have this setup, I can do whatever I want at any time, go anywhere and still be able to create, still be able to like, if a a job comes in and they're like, we need this thing for this licensing company, then I can be able to knock that shit out while I'm just in a park somewhere or, you know, like just the ultimate freedom of being able to create and, and be wherever I want to be and still have access to, to create music when I want to. Yeah. Word up. I mean, um, I think there's a funny story if I remember, like, like another cool thing about being alone on, on, on a trip, something um, about your car running out of gas, something, something like that. Yeah, that was that was the thing. So when I was in Colorado, um, well, two, so I went uh, off-roading. I found some place that, like, way up in some mountain somewhere where you could rent these off-road vehicles and just go through these, like, trails. And um, so I went up there, and I was driving this, like, UTV and I went like way out through these trails, like a few miles. And then I ended up breaking the UTV. Like I hit a jump to, I was doing things I shouldn't have been doing, <laughs> but like I hit a jump and I landed with the wheels turned and it just like, I don't know if it snapped the steering column or what, but like the wheels were just not moving. And uh, when you're that high up in the mountains, there's no cell phone signal, no nothing. So I had to basically hike back down like two, three miles to where the the camp was, where they they gave us the vehicles and I was like, yo, I just broke your thing up there. And they're like, where is it? I'm like, I was like three miles back that way. And they're like, I hey, don't worry about the game. You another keys. And I went back up and whatever. But even leaving that on the way home, uh, I had underestimated the amount of gas that I needed. And, uh, so the same day. <laughs> oh my God. This is the same day. This is like, uh, an hour after I broke the vehicle wow. and, and had to hike back. Wow, wow. And then, so I'm driving back down this mountain again, no cell phone reception, nothing. And I'm out of gas. Like the gas light comes on, the car starts puttering. So I literally just put the Jeep. Luckily, I'm driving down the side of a mountain. So I just put the Jeep in neutral and I just coasted. And I just kept enough speed to be able to continue to coast. And in that moment where I'm just like, I'm by myself, I have no cell phone signal. I don't, there's, it's a mountainous road. There's nobody driving by me. There's no houses, no nothing. It should have been a super stressful, anxiety ridden trip. Yeah. But it, I just started laughing. It was like this release of like, it doesn't matter. I'm I'm here by myself. I'm comfortable if I have to sleep in this car for a, a day or two till somebody comes by. If I have to right. hike however many miles to the next person's house. If yeah. I have to like, I'm totally comfortable with that. I don't have anybody that I have to worry about. Like if I was with my gr- a girl or something, like that would be a totally different story. If I was with right. a friend, it could be even more, be more stressful. Like I didn't have to worry about any of that. I was like, I'm comfortable with however this ends. Yeah. And I just like kind of like laughed to myself as I coasted down this road and I got super lucky that at the very bottom of the road where it turned off, there was a gas station and I just like coasted in to the gas station and was able to, to fill wow. up there. But, but it's just like that experience is just like, it's, it seems like it would be so stressful, but it's being that lost was so refreshing. And it's yeah. something that you rarely get, especially living in like New York city or LA or, you know, um, it's yeah it's it's a rare feeling and it felt really good that's amazing though yeah and i love that idea of just going somewhere uh that you want to go for with nobody 
and just not even having plans. Yeah. Because I mean, really, like, yeah. I think after a few weeks on a vacation somewhere, and we rarely get chances, you know, to, to do stuff like those kind of the, 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 the three weeks. But, uh, but <laughs> after about that amount of time, is when you start to really get to know a place and really like like it or dislike it or just understand it. And and I think that's only because you've had enough time to do nothing in those places. You know, where it's like, today is just whatever. For sure. You know, uh, w- w- when you have a week vacation with someone, it's very planned. It's like, we got to see as much as we can. We got to, we have things to do. We got to go back and say, we saw them. We got to, I want to do this. You want to do that. And then to go alone yeah. and to be able to decide from the get go, like, I'm doing whatever. That means like right away yeah. you get to live like someone who, who's from there lives. Because there's a lot of people yeah, in for Colorado sure. who are probably like, eh, I think I'm just going to go home or eh, I'm going to check out that bar or I'm going to go drive an ATV. But like they might yeah. they, they <laughs> discover things in the same way that you would have. And I think that's a great way to, to see the world because it's 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 natural. It's also like it, 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 if it's attractive to you, you're going to have these um, you know desires to go back because you're going to be like, you know what? I went there, did whatever the hell I wanted, and I was like, and I w- wanted to do more. And, and I want to go back yeah. to do more of that compared to where I am here. You know, and uh, I think that's For sure. a great way to travel. A lot of times, especially Europeans, when they travel, they're just like, well, this isn't really like home, but, you know, <laughs> it's like we, we, we're actually exploring to see, you know, new things, and I, I, I respect that. And that's, and that's a lot of what inspires me, actually, now. Um, you know, so to hear that, that's, I think that's a, probably becoming a thing um, because, you know, we're at the upper sure. echelon of uh, humanity and uh, uh, yeah. artistry. <laughs> uh, we run shit. We run shit. Yeah. Um, so I, I think that, that, that's a, that should be a thing, people. Like, you know, go out and explore. And I mean, now more than ever, actually, you know, with all this, like, distancing, like, there's no excuse not to actually go go out alone by yourself and find something. I mean, that's that's... When you know, it's interesting to, to like when when was the last time? I mean, outside of us, whoever's listening, viewing this, whatever. Yeah. Think about this: like, when's the last time that you legitimately went? Like, I wonder what's over there, and just went and right? and figured out what was over there. You know, like you used to do that all the time when you were younger. But like as an adult, you're like, ah, I can't. I don't have time to figure it out, or I'll look it up later, or whatever. But like, when's the last time you just saw something? Like, what what's that? And just like went over and explored that. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I want to. Do you think? That records made us think this way, or were you always like this, and, and then and then you applied that to records? The reason I'm asking is because on a record you're like, sometimes it could be fire. The cover looks fire. It looks the year looks fire. Yeah. The art you like, there's going to be drums on there. It's going to be like horns on there. What it's my, I'm I'm going to go to town and make a hot beat, and then you take that record home. And then sometimes <laughs> you're like, see a friend pick up a record, and it's got this nerdy like, you know, guy like I picked up a record with the, the Xerox company made. Uh, uh, and, and I made a track uh, with, with you and, and, and your crew and it was like really dope but it was like a Xerox and I was like there has to be these chances you take these corners you go like well, I wonder what's over here is what, in, in short right yeah. so do you think that and what? that that came from records a bit or, or we applied no I, I think I think we applied that I record. think we're creatives yeah I think we're creatives in the way that we are because we have that natural curiosity okay. I've always had that curiosity everything that I've ever done yeah. is self-taught and the only reason i learn yeah. things is because i'm curious yeah. like i'm learning to shoot and edit video the last couple of music videos i did i shot myself and edited it and mm. and like that's just pure me being like i wonder how that works and then falling down youtube rabbit holes and getting yeah. curious yeah. and buying a camera and then just starting to play with it you know yeah. like yeah. i think that's as a creative i think that's just part of your dna is to be curious about things and start you know looking and seeing what's there yeah you're right i remember being like um like four or five years old and uh, I remember being three years old actually and going out the back lane of my um, house like and I had to crawl underneath the fence and like just finding stuff and bringing it home my parents were like what do you got that shoe for what do you got that teething room what are you doing this is not and I'm like but there's things people left them there and then that would like and, I, and I'd get older and I'd go to garage sales and be like I remember bought an adding machine once from like the 30s it's like I, I don't think I ever used it, but Dude, it, was, it was machinery. I was like, oh, look at this machinery. It's, we you know? we are the same person, dude. I used to buy so much crap at like garage sales and yard sales. My whole bedroom when I was younger was just like 
the walls were covered with the shit that I found on the street. It was just like yeah. random signs and just like random, like it was just, I had so much, we used to dumpster dive in the, in the dumpster behind the radio shack and just pull out old wow. electronics and like, dude, everything. I just collected wow. and was like, was curious and just would buy random shit all the time. I had so, I had like old reel to reel players and just oh like, God. I never just thought curious, about man. that dumpster diving and electronic stores, people. Bro, that was the move. I got all of my speakers. All of my speakers growing up was was dumpster diving because they wow. throw out things that were good still. They just had to make room for the new stock. So like yeah. receivers, speakers, CD players, like everything I got out of that dumpster. It was Incredible. crazy. And in a place like Wisconsin, yeah. it's like a little untouched compared to like, you know, if yeah, like, n- it would be like Winnipeg, like probably digging for records there was good too in the sense that like these things, there's not as many people trying to fight for those resources, you know? So you'll find exactly. Yeah, we shit. were the only ones that knew. We we it was like me and my three friends were the only ones that knew about it. We didn't tell anybody. Yeah. And like every week, we would go back there and just dig out mad electronics. But if it was in New York or if it was in LA, it would have been like you'd yeah. have been the last person there. You know, it's like I, I hesitate For sure. to go to um, flea markets and stuff here, even though I want to. Is because well, you know, probably everybody's already picked them over. Is how I feel. You know. Yeah. But uh, yeah. But that's really dope. Wow. Wow. I never. Man, that's next level. Dumpster. I've heard of people dumpster diving in Vancouver for like, and then at, at organic food stores and getting like big things of yeah. apple juice, and I'm, and that's still like you're like dumpster diving, hmm, eating out of dumpsters. I don't know, but like speakers yeah, that's, out of dumpsters, that's a little different. Real to real, yeah. Yeah, just I, I'm gonna wear. Uh, I'm not even gonna wear gloves. I'm gonna come home, wash my hands, and then wash this. I'm not even gonna wash my hands. I'm gonna yeah. go and clean this thing. <laughs> and yeah. I'm just gonna use it and record with it, and then and then put it in the corner and never touch it again. Maybe, but like you know, it's exactly. Like, <laughs> but like, wow, that's really yeah. cool. So so what you're saying is you think we're yeah we were all we were always what's over there that's Curious. that's yeah. what led us to be this way yeah okay so i think that's a that's a part of being a, a creative is, is you have that natural curiosity for sure so then i think that's what we're imparting today's show to to artists and people in general if you're not an artist you don't even need to be one but just go out yeah. the, out there and 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 find something and like that, that makes yeah. that, that for some reason you're curious about and i'm not talking about google do not Google it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it doesn't count. That nothing on the internet counts. You have to actually physically go there. There's something. Yeah. There's something so like, I can't like ever since music went digital. Like I, I I'm not one of those like anti Serato people. I love you know like tech, these these turntables here. They're like there's no tone arm on them. You know they're like yeah yeah. I, those are I, dope. I, I I think they're great. But, so I love technology, but I just can't search as well on the internet for music. I, I'm into Spotify yeah. now, but I find that like I have the same bag of stuff, so I'm trying to like look for things. But it's not the same as when I would well, go the, for a record and be like, yo, that's out now. I need that. Oh, and then I saw... Well, that's the thing. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. The problem with the internet is that like even when you're searching, everything's curated. It's like somebody suggesting it, somebody reviewing it. Or even like a company like Google, Google ranking it a certain way. It's all yeah. none of this. You don't find things by accident on the internet when you're searching for stuff. Yeah. You're finding what somebody is recommending to you, what somebody's pushing to you. It's not the same as stumbling upon something. Well, you know? well, which which is kind of what happens in a way when I go to the record store, like in 1991. I'm like, let me get this, you know, like iced tea record. Yeah. But then on the wall, I'm like, yo, there's, you know. A, NWA. I'm like, oh, you know, it's, it's still being suggested to me, you know. And, and then after I see sure. there's another record in there, it's like on sale. I'm like, wow, you know, it's cheaper and it's also rap. I'm gonna check it out, you know. You know, it's like it's yeah. vanilla ice, but maybe maybe <laughs> it's good, you know. And then you have to find out the hard way about buying a CD for thirty bucks, whereas now it's just like, you know, yeah. let, let me just pay ten bucks a month and listen to every song that ever existed. <laughs> yeah, which is kind of we're lucky. Yeah. But anyways, the point is like, go out, explore. And uh, when you're exploring, don't forget to Google Audible Doctor. And uh, my name is DJ Brace. This is a DJ Brace show. Uh, try to use a little less resources this year because we you know, it's going to take us a year and a half <laughs> to get back to them. So just wait a couple years to buy another cell phone, you know, instead of worrying about, yeah. about if your neighbor is racist because they're going to be racist if they are, but your cell phone won't remake itself, you know? <laughs> that's for sure. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, that's really it, man. Is there anything you want to let people know uh, they should go do on a Sunday afternoon? No. No. I don't know because it could be Sunday next week. Go do something. Go do something. Yeah. Just go do something. Go do something. 
And um, and in and in uh, New York City right now, we're uh, we're saying goodbye to our man Audible Doctor, and we appreciate him coming through. Thank you. Thank you.